Hey everybody, welcome back to Everyday Journey. Today we're going to go with round two on the power feed. Only this is a different power feed. Um, my work allowed me to take these home, see if I couldn't get them in working condition again. That way when they need them, they'll be able to take them off. Well, I'll take the other ones off, put this on, and roll with it. Now this should be the better of the two but this has got a separate issue. This one actually works. They want it back. Um, it's a best line brand model number AL500P. Um, it actually does work but it has its own separate issue. So let's see if we can't figure out what's going on with it. Let me first plug it in and show you what the issue is. So right now it's plugged in I can feel that it's turned on because it's trying to do something. It's got a humming noise to it, but nothing's actually turning. If we push the, and this is, let's see, what is that? I don't know if that's forward or reverse, but it's one of the two. We go to neutral, the humming goes away. Go to forward, and I can heal, hear it or slightly feel it again. But if I push the, uh, the rapid transverse button, that's what I learned that it's called because it says it right here, it goes on like it should. So that's one way I can see. Let's try the other way. It definitely goes the other way. So unlike the other one, forward and reverse is not the issue on this one. Right now, it has something to do with the, uh, the dial for the dialing and the speed. So. Let's go ahead and take this one apart. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of it as far as taking it apart because it's pretty much about the same as the other one it looks like. Um, all the bolts and stuff are in the same place. If you want to look at that video on how to take it apart, it'll be either up here or up here in this card. Um, just click on that. Only difference will be that this one actually has a cover on the bottom where my other one doesn't. So we'll be taking that cover off. It looks like just two screws right here. So we'll go ahead and take it apart and we'll get back to it, okay? Unplug it first. All right, so in my adventure of taking this one apart, thinking everything was gonna be exactly the same, there were a few differences. Now one of the things, and this is probably something they did in the shop just because this handle gets a lot of use and that most likely looking at the uh, at the condition of the shaft that it was on, probably had backed out the uh, the Allen or the uh, well, it's an Allen, but the set screw had probably backed out several times. Um, so to try to help stop that, what they ended up doing, and this this really messed with me for a minute anyway, was they put a set screw in, got it in where it needed to be, but it was a short set screw. Then they followed it with another set screw. Um, kind of just to lock that one in place. I wasn't really expecting it, so it took me a minute to figure it out, but I got it. Um, the other thing, and this is just a slight thing, is whenever you're pulling the cover off of this, the other one, I don't remember exactly how it worked out, but um, this cover, you actually have this, you know, your uh, your switch here for your, your override, or what do they call it again? Your rapid transverse that switch right there is actually has got a got a connector in there that says you can disconnect it from everything in here so it doesn't really just come off of here very easily no big deal you just pull it apart slowly and go ahead and remove that clip that way you can pull things apart so now we're into the middle of it though now we can see or at least attempt to see what's going on with it let me go ahead and zoom down all right so hopefully you can see that it's pretty similar to the last one that I took apart, except for, I mean, there's just little differences. One, there's the switch is not up top like it was. It's not screwed up here where it was on the last one. Um, but we've got the what was wired into the switch. I mean, this is it right here. So it's just on the cover, just in different placement. Um, we do have our rocker switch down here that actually goes forward and reverse. And then we've got a kind of like a fuse right here that you can push to reset. And 
all our circuitry and everything is back here. That's what I guess, most likely because of this potentiometer right here. Um, I'm guessing that the circuitry, something to do with the either the circuitry or the potentiometer. Um, hopefully though, it's just a wire or some type of fuse or anything on the uh, the circuit board that's just minimal that we can tell easily that it's burned out or something. That would be nice, um, but we got to get to it to find out. So. Again, this thing is still unplugged, so what we need to do first is remove this top part. This is actually, unlike the other one, actually has a clip, a retaining clip on it. So we're going to have to pop that out. You can see here the pin that goes through. It's got a retaining clip right back here. Um, may have to take off this in order to get to it because there's two little, two little screws right here. Um, that will take this off of here and it's just a bracket take that off so I can access that that retainer clip there so we'll go ahead and do that so now we got that loose pop this off The other one actually lifted all the way out, or all the way up, so we got to figure out how to get this one off. Just pull back against this spring here and get this lifted up high enough to get that out of the way. So that's good. I don't want to have to take out anything more than I have to. Well, I'm not very bright. There's our pin right there at the bottom. So we slide that out of the way. And now we can take the whole shaft completely out. There it goes. Most likely just deformed a little bit around those holes, making it hard to pull out. So now we've got some space. So our next thing is, we need to try to, I'd like to get this potentiometer out, but I don't think, unless this shaft is removable, I don't think it's going to come out except for this way. And the shaft looks like it's one piece, so I'm sure that's not going to be the case. It's going to have to come out this way, but our motor's in the way. So looking to see if there's an easy way of taking the motor off most likely it's just going to be these two bolts or Phillips head screws most likely with machine heads on them or machine threads we'll see in a second now, before taking this off completely anyway it does have brushes in it. We need to get those brushes out of there so that it can easily be pulled off. So they're just on either side. Flathead screwdriver. Alright, so I got me a stubby screwdriver. Let's try this again. They're just plastic covers. And I'm trying not to deform them any more than they already are. So the best thing you could do is get the largest screwdriver that will fit in there. There they go. So they should come out like that. The other one was kind of spring was kind of deforming a little bit there we go that one's coming out too and as you can see the spring was a little deformed so try not to do that Let's see if that wasn't all that was holding it no it's spinning so we know it's not bolted 
something else is holding it. So I don't have a soft hammer, but I do have a piece of copper, which is probably still not soft enough, but we can hit that first and hope for the best. There we go. That's all it needed. Flip this back over. And this front bearing here seems to be really good. It spins pretty easily. That rear bearing there, it's definitely seen better days. If I do get this working again, I will tell them that that would be a good thing to replace. So now we got the motor out of the way. We can go ahead and unclip some of these clips that are holding it in place. There's one, well, only one. So now we don't have that to worry about. So let's see, what else can we get to here? Like I said, we want to get to that potentiometer right there and now it looks like we finally can. So now we got to see how to get it out. There are Phillips head screwdrivers right or screws right here. Go ahead and take that out. It looks like just the one. So here are the wires that go to the potentiometer. Some of them go up to the switch that was up top. That's all of them right there. We'll remove these and this one. Now let's see if we can't get the potential. There it goes. So there's a good chance that this might be our problem right here. Looking at the wiring though, I don't see an issue directly with the wiring. Looking at the, the ends, all the pins look to be intact, except for one looks like it's a little shorter. I believe that would be the one going to this blue wire here, but it looks like we could probably push that back in. Yeah, so we're good on that. So now we just need to check this potentiometer. Alright, so now we take our multimeter, and this is something that I learned online. It's not anything that I knew about beforehand. You can learn a lot of stuff on the internet, YouTube even. And uh, anyway, go ahead and switch our multimeter over to ohms. And as you can see, we've got nothing. We should have something there. Um, we turn it. And I already checked this out, but I don't get anything at all until one specific point. Um, and there's three leads here. I've got it on the two outside ones, which actually should be connected. If you if you look that up, you should be able to see that they, they should be connected. But we've got nothing through here. So I'm pretty sure this one is just shot. We'll try connect it to the middle one. And that should be connected as well, but just not as much. And we get a little bit there, that one spot, but everywhere else we get nothing. So, pretty sure this thing is just shot. Uh, looking at the website for these, I actually see that they are 
I think it's a 10,000 kilo ohm potentiometer. So I do have one potentiometer that I can use to try to test it. And yes, it is 10,000 kilo ohm, but it comes in a, an electrical test circuit. I think it's a it's a learning lab thing. Um, so we're going to hook it up to that and see if we can't get this thing to run with a different potentiometer. All right, so we got it back together enough to where all the electronics are connected up, the motor is connected up, the brushes are back in. What we don't have is this shaft here that would have our uh, our gears. Um, we don't have that connected up, and that's fine. We don't need that. We just want the motor. Um, we can see, still see potentiometer is still not doing any good. This thing is humming right now, so it's on. We push our override button. <laughs> and that works so now what we have to do is wire up and if you can see this this is my electronics kit I have a 10,000 K or 10 K uh, potentiometer here it's got the same three if you can see that it's the same three uh, connections there we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and since this is actually open it's an open circuit. If it was closed and wasn't working, I couldn't do this. But since it's open, um, there's no short or anything between any of this. So I'm actually going to just wire jump from here to here. And uh, hopefully being able to still use this, um, this capacitor, so that it actually does what it's supposed to do. Um, but this will be just a real quick thing just to see if this is going to work. So let's go ahead and turn things off, unplug it, and hook this up. All right, so as you can see, my red wire here, it's connected to this middle clip. It's going down to the middle one on here. And then this one is, I mean, I just have them the same way that they'd be set up. So if I flip this thing up like this, they'd be the same color as this here. Um, now we just turn it on. We hear our hum, and now we turn our potentiometer. And as you can see, the further we go with it, the faster it goes. So that's our way to check it. Now we've got our speed control. Now we've got our direction. Everything seems to work. Just a matter of uh, getting a replacement potentiometer. They do have these on the website for $12. Sure, plus tax, plus shipping. Um, given that this is about a $400 unit, I'd say that's well worth it to get this thing running again. Uh, so there we go. It's not fixed per se, but we do know what's wrong with it. We do know where we can get the parts. And once we do, we can just put this thing back together and it'll be in working condition. Um, I will tell them that there's a good chance that this bearing here will need to be replaced. Um, either that or replace the actual, uh, I forgot what they call it, but that whole shaft there, um, that is available on the website. And then at the same time, I would probably go ahead and replace the, uh, the switch I keep calling it override switch um, because that just kind of sticks. Wouldn't think that that's something they want to keep, and that's real cheap on there too. So that's up to them that what they want to replace. The only thing that has to be replaced is just that potentiometer, and it'll be in working condition again. So hopefully you guys like this. If you want to see more things like this, just let me know. I will try my best to find some stuff like this to tear apart, fix. Um, if you got any questions? Send them my way. Everything I've learned here. I either learn by just taking apart stuff or watching other people's videos on the internet. You can learn a lot of good things. One thing is when you're dealing with electricity, you got to be careful. So know the safety part of it first, and then uh, and then the rest of it will will lead you a long way after that. So I appreciate you guys watching as always, and you guys take care.